What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at the King's Land in Brooklyn, and we are here with Ryan of Righteous Vendetta. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, of course, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's so awesome to have you here. So the latest record is your 2017 release of Curse, but I know you have been putting out a couple of singles uh, between then. Could these singles may serve as like a clear preview of what the next Righteous Vendetta record is going to sound like? It's possible. So we've been releasing that stuff, and then actually tonight at midnight, we re we're releasing our newest track, which comes out at literally midnight, um, Valentine's Day. Uh, and that is probably more in the direction of what's actually going to sound like, like as we move forward. Interesting. Do you try to maintain a, uh, like a signature sound or a, like a formula in the Righteous Vendetta catalog, or has like every song or even every record call for a new approach? Yeah, we've shifted. So... We, I mean, we've been a band for 12 years, so we started out in the in the hard, like the Midwest hardcore scene, like straight, like you know, almost beat down, heavy, heavy stuff. And then we, sh you know, we kind of got hooked up with Jamie from Hatebreed when he was at Razor and Tie, and he was like, "Hey, I really want you guys to do a radio single." So we went into that world for a while, did a couple records like that, had a couple top 40s, and then now we're kind of shifting back to our roots of like a heavier more heavy metal, like less radio driven kind yeah. of thing. Cause I discovered you guys on like Sirius XM Octane or something. So when I saw you on a tour with Skin Lab and King 810, I was like, really? Are they going to be like the lighter band on the bill? Dude, we're so, so we like, we toured with like Trapped and we've, you know, we toured with Hell Yeah, they're a little bit heavier. Like we toured with Red, uh, you know, the Flyleaf guys. We've done all these tours and we're always the odd man out cause we're so much heavier than everybody. And this tour, we're playing like our heavy set. And we're still the lightest band, man. We're like, damn, we can't, we can't. Like, so we're very versatile in who we can tour with and what songs we can play. Like, we can cater to a certain crowd. So, yeah, it, it, that's awesome that you have the ability to adjust your set list. It's not like, you know, Cannibal Corpse, I don't think would be, do well on a tour with like Huba Stank or something like that. It's true, man. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're lucky that way. Yeah. When it comes to lyrics, do you need to hear music in order to come up with like a lyrical concept or can a lyrical concept maybe help determine the music itself? Man, for us, it kind of goes both ways. Sometimes I'll have a lyric and, or an idea, like a song idea, and I'll just write out the lyrics and then kind of a custom, make, customize them to a song that's already written. Sometimes I have to have the song first. It just depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Can the lyrics be open to interpretation, or do you uh, try to like maybe inform the listener on a certain subject? Completely artistic. Whatever you want it to mean is what it can mean to you. So there's traces of you know spiritualness, politics, all this stuff. And when I write it, sometimes I'm not even sure what I, what it means. I just I just feel it. So it's totally open to to interpretation. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned you would tap into many different subject matters. So it's fair to say you take inspiration from many different sources, right? Absolutely. Yeah, especially like like experiences I've had or experiences you know my friends have had. Um, that kind of stuff I lean into a lot, really heavily. So anything you hear in our music is in some way something that's happened to me or something that's happened to someone I know that and I can kind of write a story about it mm -hmm. so the entire last record was called cursed because literally I was in a time in my life where I felt cursed nothing went right mm -hmm. so you can hear that in the lyrics mm -hmm. one thing in order to get inspired to write like to, do you have to like in a way put yourself in a certain situation or just like ideas just come out of the blue Man, it depends. Sometimes I'm super inspired and sometimes like, man, maybe I should do heroin for like two years because then I can have, so, you know, I could like write something. Uh, I wouldn't do that. No, I, no, obviously I don't, but, um, you know, it's like the people that have the hardest trouble are the ones that have something to say, you know, and, and I think that, that that's necessary. That's pretty true. And I, I haven't had a hard life or anything like that. So, you know, maybe my songwriting isn't as like in depth and like real as someone who has had a hard life or, or something like that, you know, drug addictions and all that. So, dude, it just comes and goes. Sometimes I can't write anything for like half a year, and I just won't because yeah. it's like, why force it? Yeah. How do you get over an artist block? I just hear something that I'm that inspires me, like someone else's song, or like my guitar player will write something, and I'll be like, oh, that was, oh my gosh, I have something. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting that pain isn't your only paintbrush. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It, you got to find those other things that. It doesn't necessarily have to be pain, and a lot of it is, um, but there's there's so much to write about, man. It's, it just depends on what you're trying to get across, you know? Yeah, definitely. When it comes to playing live, is that a completely different, like, energy or a completely different art than when you're in songwriting mode, or is there maybe, like, a similar method behind the madness? When I write songs, I write them with a live mentality. So 
one thing we always ask ourselves is, will this be awesome live? So we almost write our music with a live mentality of like, dude, when this hits, will this slam live? So we write like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, so like d- when people hear your music live, it's not like you're adjusting anything or anything like that, right? Mm-mm. Not at all. Interesting. No. Now, kind of going back to playing with different bands, like you mentioned, you know, you're the lighter band on this tour, but you know, you're like the heavier band on like your rock peers. You've had to have noticed like a different reaction when you're on stage, right? Yeah. I mean, usually when we're on those like softer, I mean, we've been on like Christian tours before, you know, and we get a lot of like you know, people staring like, what in the world is this? Because they've never even been exposed to it. And then, you know, we're on tour with Hell Yeah. And we can, you know, cater to those people and write that, you know, that heavy riffy stuff. And you know, we've toured with head pe- We've toured with, the, like, Juggalo bands, man. You know. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop, yeah. And we were like, dude, we're going to get annihilated on stage. Like, these guys are going to hate us. And it's never been like that. It's always been, like, a pretty good reception all across the board. So I just think with, with, with our band, we've always, we always keep it super real, like, it, we just we just cut out there and just play as hard as we can. And I think it comes across. People are like, oh, I didn't really like the band, but they tried really hard, <laughs> you know, or at least they tried. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can tell they're passionate about what they do. And, you know, most people can appreciate that and not and not, just, you know, hate on it. Yeah. Um, I have a couple more questions for you. Um, when it comes to like the all, different styles that you incorporate in the different sounds behind Righteous Vendetta, could they be representative of who you and the band were at that specific time in a way? Absolutely. For sure. I mean. Our roots are like 2008, 2009 metalcore, like that Asley Dying era, Kill Switch Engage. That was when we were like, that was our thing. That's my shit. Yes. So you'll hear that all night. Yeah. Um, you'll hear some five finger, you know, chuggies with like the low vocals. Um, you'll hear like pop elements. Um, it's kind of all over the place, you know. Do you have like a preconceived idea in a way? Like that's how we want to do it? Or does it like just come out that way? No, we, we don't go in like trying to write this kind of song. We'll write a song like that and be like, we can make this a RV song. Who's going to say we can't? Dude, we just, we do what we want. There you go. You know? Uh, here comes the most difficult question. How do you know when a song is done? <laughs> uh, when I don't, when I'm fed up and don't want to write anymore and I'm just like, it's done. I don't care. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Yeah. That was an honest one. And uh, you mentioned you're from the Midwest hardcore scene. What state are you guys from again? We're from Wyoming. Okay. Oh, yeah. wow. First band from Wyoming. Yeah. So we're, we're not really Midwest, but Wyoming and we're from Wyoming and Montana. So like anytime we want to tour, we have to go somewhere else. Yeah. So it's not like there's a scene in Wyoming that you guys were like associated with or anything like that. Not really. I mean, the occasional home show, but that's okay. it. Is there like, are there other metal bands in Wyoming? You're, you're the only band I know of so far. I think we're the only band I know of right now. I mean, there was like local bands in some of the towns right. across the state, but our, where we live now in Billings, Montana, there's, there's quite a few. There's like two mo- metal bands in town awesome. that are good. Yeah. yeah. You please do a show at the Yellowstone Volcano. Oh, <laughs> what, maybe, what, we could uh, upset the volcano and it'll erupt. Yeah, there you go. Dude, uh, that would be the most... You will upstage every metal band in history. I'll also be vaporized. <laughs> uh, I live 30 miles from, from Yellowstone. That's where I'm from. Okay. So I'm very familiar with the with the area. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the vaporized part. All right. Maybe maybe not the best. We'll all die. We're all going to die if it goes off. Yeah. All right. Well, just make sure you know you get your uh, compensation and everybody... You know. Yep. Be like, we're the most metal band ever. <laughs> we, uh, we were on a volcano when we died. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Is there just anything else you'd like to promote for Righteous Vendetta in terms of uh, tours or some new music, if you're allowed to say? Oh, yeah. New song coming out tonight, uh, so February 14th, Unshakable, super heavy, if you're into that. Um, yeah, we're finishing up this King, King 810 tour, and got a couple tour plans in the works that I don't really know dates for or anything like that, but it's kind of a hope hope to do, so we'll see if it happens. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Thanks. Ryan. Everybody, Ryan of Righteous Vendetta, new single out now. By the time this is up on YouTube, be sure to check that out. I said that <laughs> out now. Yeah, there you go. Check it out now while supplies last forever. This is Alex from Heavy New York. We'll see you next time.